storms, hotter seasons. With a specialized degree in climate, he's pioneering the way we look at climate and how it affects our weather. Now, climate specialist Jeff Veradelli. In today's climate classroom, as the impact of climate change accelerates, some scientists are edging closer to supporting what many call a drastic measure. Earlier this week, 60 scientists published a letter calling for more research into solar radiation management, a very controversial process which proposes using tiny reflective particles to block some of the sun and help cool the earth. Now, for some, it's an attractive approach because it's relatively cheap and we know it will work to cool us down. And that's because nature has been doing this for billions of years through volcanoes. A recent example is the massive eruption of Mount Pinatubo in 1991, which cooled the Earth's average atmospheric temperature by around one degree for a few years. Here's how it works. I want to describe it to you. So when volcanoes erupt, if they're big enough, that ash can go into the stratosphere. That puts a lot of aerosol, soot, and ash into the stratosphere, and it blocks the sun out. By blocking the sun out, it can cool the Earth naturally. Now, what some scientists want to do is kind of replicate that by flying planes up into the stratosphere. Again, it wouldn't be all that expensive and putting aerosols up there manually. And by doing so often, it would have to be every day or every week or so, and a lot of planes, we would be reflecting some of that sunlight back into space and we would be cooling the Earth. But we would just be treating the symptoms and there's a lot of dangers to that. So number one, unintended consequences are likely, meaning that as we cool the Earth, there'll be some winners and some losers. Some places will get more rain, others will end up in droughts. We might shift the monsoon. We don't know what could potentially happen if we were to do that. Also, it kicks the can down the road on fixing the root cause of climate change, meaning it kicks the can down the road on fixing emissions because we're concentrating on fixing the symptoms by using those aerosols. And so that could also be a danger. But the biggest danger is once it's started, solar radiation management must continue indefinitely or termination shock will occur. Meaning that let's say 30 years from now, the world decides, oh, we don't want to do this anymore. Then all of a sudden 30 years worth of warming will happen in just one year or less. And that would shock the climate system. I talked to Gavin Schmidt. He is the head of NASA about this, NASA Goddard. And here's what he had to say. Doing this on a global scale and sustaining it uh, across regimes and coups and wars and economic growth and decline and multiple presidential and congressional elections that that just seems to me to be such a uh, uh, such a big ask because when you stop doing uh geoengineering it all comes rushing back unless you've reduced your your emissions in the in the meantime and since reducing emissions in the meantime is 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 the point of everybody else's efforts it seems to me we should just be focusing on reducing emissions now, at the present time, most scientists agree with Gavin. In fact, last year, a group of scientists published a paper calling for an international agreement to ban solar geoengineering. For more Climate Classroom, visit WFLA.com.